Section 3 Getting Hands On with XB. In this section, we will cover the following topics Hardware Overview of XB S2C, Introduction to the XCTU Software, XB S2C Module Configuration using XCTU Part 1, XB S2C Module Configuration using XCTU Part 2, Chat Application using two XB Modules Part 1 Basic Implementation, Chat Application using two XB Modules Part 2 adding encryption, chat application using two XB modules part 3, AT command implementation. Video 3.1 Hardware Overview of XB S2C In this video, we will cover the following topics. Overview of XB S2C module, Features of XB S2C, S2C pin configurations, Overview of XB USB adapter. Digi International manufactures a bewildering array of XB branded radios. All told, there are at least 50 different combinations of component hardware, firmware protocols, transmission powers, and antenna options. We are specifically using a Series 2 variant of the XB module, which supports many features like mesh networking. To be more precise, we are using the XB S2C version E module. XB S2C is an RF module designed for wireless communication or data exchange and it works on SIGBI communication protocol that sits on top of IEEE 802.15.4 layers. There are many advanced XB modules that support Wi-Fi, cellular, LoRa and more. But we choose this XB module for its low cost, availability, documentation, ease of use, Ease of learning the basics of ZigBee and support for ZigBee Pro and DigiMesh firmware. It is simple and has an out of the box RF communication that needs no configuration. Also, using RF means that it is ideal for applications that require predictable communication timings for point to point, peer to peer, and multi point configurations. It also only sips in under 1 microampere of current during sleep. There are different variants of the same module based on the antenna type. We have here the wire antenna type. Furthermore, XB S2C supports the concept of IO line passing, which allows you to interface some analog and digital peripherals directly to the XB modules than using a microcontroller, thus enabling standalone implementation. How cool is that? We will cover this topic in the next section. Now let's look at some of the other features of the XB S2C module. It can communicate up to 300 feet or 90 meter in the closed area. In outdoor line to line site, the range can be up to 2 miles, provided that the antenna is long. There is no interference in the environment and the module can emit maximum transmit power output. The module can act as a mesh network with each other. A microcontroller attached to the XP module can send the data up to 256 kilobytes per second using UART communication. The maximum data rate of communication between modules is 250 kilobytes per second. The device works with 3.3 volt and uses only 40 to 45 milliampere current at maximum usage and below 1 microampere during sleep mode. XB has onboard features like digital I/O pins, analog ADC input pins, PWM output pins, and SPI. The XB has electrostatic discharge protection of 3000 volt. The device is controllable and programmable by a single software that is official. It is called XCTU and it is compatible with all platforms. Now let's look at the pin configuration of our specific module. XP S2C has 20 pins. The pins are counted from the top left corner to the bottom and then continued on the right side from the bottom up. The pin 20 will be on the opposite side to pin 1. Some of the pins are multiplexed, meaning that Based on the configuration, the same pin can act in different ways, serving a different function. Pin 1 is the VCC of the XB module and it needs no more than 3.3 volt to operate properly. It can even operate at as low as 2.7 volt to up to 3.6 volt. Thus be careful not to connect any 5 volt lines to the XB module. Pin 2 is known as D out and it is used for UART data out. Pin 3 is known as DIN and is used for UR data input. Both of them together are used to either send data, receive data or to configure the module. Any serial UART interface is enough for us to plug into an XP module and play with it. 
Pin 4 is an output pin that acts as SPI underscore MISO pin for serial peripheral interface data out. Pin 5 is the reset pin. This resets the module. By default, this pin is high. And to do a reset, this pin needs to be driven low. Pin 6 is a multiplexed output pin which can work as a PWM output for general purpose or it can be configured to automatically change the PWM duty cycle based on the receiver signal strength. In essence, the second function is also using the PWM functionality. But it is just that the PWM output is automatically attached to the RSSI of the wireless communication. Pin 7 is the same as pin 6 but with only PWM output functionality. So pin 6 is called as PWM output 0 while pin 7 is PWM output 1. Pin 8 is a reserved pin. It is not meant to be connected to any peripherals. Pin 9 is an input pin and can either be a digital input 8 or a sleep control line for pin activated sleep mode. Pin 10 is just a ground pin. Pin 11 is both an input and an output pin. It can handle both digital input and output and is named as DIO4. It can also work as an SPA data input pin. Pin 12 can also be used as an input and output pin. It can handle the digital input and output and is named DIO7. It is also used for flow control, specifically clear to send flow control. To understand this, you need to also know about request to send flow control, which comes in at pin 16. So once we talk about that, we will explain the concept of flow control and how these pins manage them. Pin 13 is an output pin dedicated to monitor the sleep status of the device. If the pin is high, the module is on and if low, the module is in sleep. Sleep doesn't mean that the module is off. Pin 14 is a VREF pin, which is neither an output nor an input pin. It is used as an analog voltage reference. Having the VREF value is critical for threshold detectors, reference inputs to analog digital converters and comparators. Pin 15 to pin 20 all can be used as both input and output pins. Pin 15 is a digital input and output pin also known as DIO5. It can also be configured as an associate output pin which can be connected to an LED. Based on the patterns of blinking as shown here in this table, we can get in-depth sleep and diagnostic information. Pin 16 is a digital input and output pin also known as DIO6. It can also be configured to work for request to send flow control. Now we will explain the flow control concept and relate it to pin 12. Pin 12 and pin 16 configured in CTS and RTS mode respectively allow the receiver and the transmitter to alert each other about their state. A transmitter raises its RTS line which causes an interrupt on the receiver. If the receiver is in a position to receive the data, it will assert its CTS line. The raising and lowering of these lines allow device drivers which implement hardware flow control code to maintain a reliable data connection between the transmitter and the receiver. Pin 17 can be used in three ways. As a digital I.O. pin named DIO3 or as an analog input pin named AD3 or as an SPI select pin. Pin 18 can be used in three ways. As a digital I.O. pin named DIO2 or as an analog input pin named AD2 or as an SPI clock pin. Pin 19 can be used in three ways as a digital I.O. pin named DIO1 or as an analog input pin named AD1 or as an SPA attention pin. And finally, pin 20 can be used in two ways as a digital I.O. pin named DIO0 or as an analog input pin named AD0. If you compare the pins of the XP from any other standard boards like the Arduino, the ESP32 or the Raspberry Pi, you can see that the pins are a little bit smaller and more importantly, the spacing between the pins are shorter. Thus, you can't directly connect a jumper wire or fix the module on a normal breadboard. This is why we need a breakout board like the one shown here that enables the XP modules to be easily interfaced to other devices and on the breadboard. As explained during the UR pin explanation, pin D out and pin D in can be used either to send data, receive data or configure the module. Any serial UART interface is enough for us to plug into an XP module and play with it. We can use another microcontroller board like the Arduino Uno or the ESP32 to configure them or we can use an FTDI to serial module to configure them. But the best way to configure and test the XP modules is to use an XP USB adapter. 
On top of giving access to configure the XP modules, it also has the following features on board which are very useful for learning and testing. 1. Dedicated reset button. 2. Access to all pins. 3. UART LEDs to monitor whether transmission and reception is happening. 4. RSSI monitoring LED. 5. Power LED. 6. Sleep monitoring LED. And 7. Associate LED for diagnostic purposes. Video Summary In this video, we have covered the following topics. Overview of XBS2C module, Features of XBS2C, S2C pin configurations, Overview of XBUSB adapter. In the next video, we will learn about the official configuration and management software of XB modules called the XCTU.